Hey folks, here we're going to take a look at a game that is currently seeking funding on Kickstarter. That game is called Master of Respect and it's from Hobby Japan Games. Now if you like what you see throughout the rest of this preview video, I'm going to encourage you to go to the official Kickstarter project page. You can do that by following the link in the top corner of your screen, as well as down in the description section underneath this video. Now Master of Respect is a competitive game for 3-5 to five players. You and the other players take control of a master of a dojo. And what does any good uh, karate or kung fu dojo want to do? They want to bring in new students, prestigious students, really highly trained and skilled students, so they can have those students go to to a tournament with the other competing dojos, the rival dojos, and uh, see who comes out on top and who earns the most respect. Hence the title of the game. Respect is very important in martial arts. Now, of course, in gameplay terms, that respect is going to earn you victory points, and several other things are going to get you victory points as well. So, without further ado, let me go ahead and give you a brief look at how the game is played with a prototype version of the game. So do bear in mind that what you see here may change in the final version. You can go to the Kickstarter page to find out more about that. But then in any event, we're going to discuss it further after this preview. Master of Respect is a competitive game for 3-5 to five players. Each player is the master of a dojo. You must expand your dojo and bring in more students, but in order to do that, you need to earn respect as a master. The game takes place over 5 rounds, and whoever has the most victory points at the end of those 5 rounds is the winner. Set up the game by randomly giving one player the start player tile. All players get a screen and a master card to match. Each master has a different starting amount of resources that you'll take at that time. Those resources are gold, the yellow tokens, sake, the blue tokens, and respect tokens, which start off on the dark face-down side, but can eventually be flipped up to the used face-up side. There are also five and ten denomination tokens for used respect. Only face-up used respect tokens, or fives and tens, are worth any points at the end of the game, and they must be kept separate from the unused tokens. Make a stock of the extra resources within reach of all players, which are considered to be unlimited. Each player gets a set of three initial skill tiles and three initial student cards. Your starting tiles have an ability on each side, which you choose when placed. These abilities can get you gold, sake, face down respect tokens, allow you to convert one resource to another, or allow you to purchase a better skill tile from the main stock. All skill tiles also have a strength rating, indicated by red slashes. More on these later. Student cards have two sides to them. Starting Takuan and Chinen students are slightly different for every master. When used, you may get resources which sometimes require them to be respected first, which I'll explain later. Every student also has slashes that indicate their strength in tournaments, just like the tiles. All students can be trained and flipped over to their other side by paying the cost at the bottom of the card when you gain that action to perform. This might improve their abilities and their strength, but can also make them worth victory points, indicated by the yin-yang symbols at the bottom. However, everyone's third initial student, the Bokun Engine, is different when they're trained. They can give you an escalating amount of victory points based on how many of a certain resource you have at the end of the game, either gold, sake, students, or skills. The advanced skill tiles come in stacked sets of two and are laid out on the table. The top of each of these tiles has their purchase cost in either sake, gold, or a combination of the two. Unlike the initial tiles, these each only have one skill, but they're strictly better than the initial tiles. They'll get you resources when used, allow you to convert for respect tokens, or allow you to invite or train a student. Inviting a student has to do with the lineup of advanced students that's laid out at the table at the start of the game. The deck is shuffled and a number of face-up students are laid out equal to the number of players. Every student has a cost at the bottom of their face-up side, which serves two purposes. When given the action to do so, you pay that cost to recruit them to your school, and when they're already in your school, you can pay the cost again when given the action to train them for their better side. Just like with the initial student cards, this can increase your student's abilities, strength, and victory point total for the end of the game. The game takes place over five rounds, which you track on a separate board. Every round is broken down into four phases. The first phase is the order phase, which everyone does simultaneously. Behind your screen so that the other players can't see, you line up your students in the order you would like them to take actions, from left to right, and then place one skill tile above each student's. Tiles must go with students. If you have extras of either one, they're left to the side for now. 
With the initial tiles, place the skill you want to use so that it's directly against the top of the student card. Then flip the tile over horizontally so it maintains its orientation. When everyone is done, the phase ends. The next phase is execution. The player with the starting tile will go first and take the three steps of the phase, then each other player will do the same in clockwise order. It keeps going around like this until every player's tile has been flipped and executed. The screen is removed and everyone can see what students you've chosen and their tiles, although those still stay face down for now. The first two steps are flipping and execution. Flip the tile and then take that action. If the tile has more than one action, you may play all or part of the action. Skill tiles can either allow you to gain resources, convert resources, buy a special skill tile from the stock, or recruit or train a student. The third step of each player's turn in this phase is checking for respect. While it is still the active player's turn, after executing their action, other players may choose to pay that player respect by giving them a face down, unused respect token. If they do so, they can mimic the action that the active player took. For the active player, the token that is given to them is flipped to the use side and is now worth half a point at the end of the game. And if the active player student who initiated the action has a respect action, that can now be activated. Once all players have used all their tile actions and given the other players a chance to respond, you move on to the tournament phase, which is skipped in the first round. Each player submits the rightmost student and accompanying tile from their row to participate in the tournament. Combine the strength rating of the tile and the student to figure out the total strength, then compare that to all other players' combatants. Whoever has the highest total strength is the winner, with ties going to the individual student card that has the highest strength, and if it's still tied, then ties go to the player closest to the current start player. First, second, and third place will win rewards, either in gold, sake, or used respect tokens. However, the downside to this step is that the used, tile, and student will remain out on the table for the next round, unusable until the next tile and student is submitted in the following tournament. After this is the end of round phase. All other students and tiles are returned behind the player's screen. All student cards still in the market are placed on the bottom of the deck and replaced with new ones. The round marker is moved down and the next player in clockwise order gets the start player tile. After five rounds of this, the game ends and scoring occurs. Every used respect token in your possession is worth half a point. Every five leftover resource, that is, sake, gold, and unused respect tokens, is worth one point. Student cards may have a certain amount of positive or even negative victory points that need to be added together. And finally, every player's book and engine student has its own victory point conditions that you must follow. Add all these together, and whoever has the most points at the end of all of that is the winner of the game. That is Master of Respect. It's really the interplay of different elements in Master of Respect that is the most interesting because there's so many things here that are sort of shades of the sort of traditional board gaming elements that you might be very familiar with, like worker placement or uh, deck building of a sort. But they're just implemented in very different ways here. So obviously you're training, you're bringing in students and you're training them, you're improving them. Uh, and so as time goes on throughout the game, you're increasing your ability to... Uh, to have the strength for tournaments and to take more actions by bringing in these students. So there's a little bit of deck building there. Of course, you never shuffle your students. They just lay out there for you. So they're a bit like workers in that regard, but especially the tiles as well. Uh, but it's interesting because in order to actually utilize them every round, you have to have that pairing. A, uh, a student goes to, uh, to fight in tournaments and to also just... Uh, impress the, the dojo or you know whatever it takes in order to use a skill they, they have to have a skill you know for the day essentially with them that they're training with and so you have to have that pairing of the tile and the students you can't neglect one or the other so as the game goes on when you're trying to take actions with your tiles and students you need to be looking at okay I need to be able to recruit more students I need to be able to train more students I need to be able to get more skill tiles but in order to do that, I need to get more of these different types of resources. So it's this constant back and forth of like, 
What am I going to do this round? I have to get resources. Other players are getting ahead of me and like really good students, but I need to be focusing on the basics and getting more resources to get more stuff later on. That's sort of how the tone and the tenor of the game goes. And you might have up and down rounds, and you know, one round you might win the tournament, one round you might not, because, of course, when you submit one of your students to the tournament, you can't use them for the next round. So there is sort of a give and take back and forth there, but it's a very interesting one at that. Uh, there's also the fact that, you know, there's multiple different ways to get victory points here. The, the whole aspect of how you can sort of solicit other players to use your current ability for the rounds during the execution phase by them giving you respect is a very interesting thing. It's not a lot of victory points, but it can add up over time. But more importantly, it could activate certain students' abilities and get you more resources in that round. And then there's the fact that students themselves can be worth victory points. And a lot of the advanced students are worth negative victory points if you don't train them. But it might be very costly to both recruit and to train them, and you only have so many resources during the course of the game. So it can be sort of a a narrow margin of victory as you move forward, because everyone is moving along at sort of the same pace, but who is deciding to get resources in what way? How are they choosing to go about it? There's a lot of different paths to victory and a lot of different ways to get those victory points. And so while the game is actually not overly complicated, it's pretty quick to set up and pretty quick to teach, there's so many different things going on that no two games are going to be alike, and you're always going to have a different option the next time you play in order to get to that victory. And watching what the other players do is very fascinating as well. So if this appeals to you, if you like the theme, I didn't even talk about the theme much, of, you know, the master of a dojo and training their students in martial arts, which is a very, of course, there's tons of games that uh, try to dabble in that, and so few of them can actually marry the mechanics uh, very accurately to the theme, and I think this one uh, does, then if you like that theme, if you like the gameplay, if you like the mechanisms that, that I was talking about and that sort of interplay of how the cards work, don't take my word for any of this. Go to the official Kickstarter project page and find out more for yourself. You can do so by following the link in the top corner of your screen, as well as down in the description section underneath this video. That is Master of Respect from Hobby Japan Games. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, for supporting our sponsors. Take care.